I'm glad to see so many participants joining us. Uh, my name is uh, Matthias Brunner. Greetings from Stockholm. I am an SCF member and together with Sayer uh, Fakir, I have the pleasure and honor to be co-facilitating the work on this first report on the determination of the needs of developing country parties related to implementing the Convention and the Paris Agreement. And I will be taking us through this webinar. Zahir, do you want to say, introduce yourself as well? Um, just briefly, hi everyone, I'm Zahir Fakir. Uh, from South Africa. I'm a SEF member and uh, working the pleasure of working with Matthias on the needs determination uh, uh, report on behalf of the uh, SEF uh, and welcome everybody to this uh, webinar. Um, uh, and for those that are wondering why am I sitting in the garden, uh, today is a national holiday in South Africa. It's Heritage Day where we uh, celebrate the different cultures and heritage of South Africa and uh, celebrate the, the the strength of diversity uh, that uh, the different cultures bring to the country. So uh, please excuse my uh, posture, uh, but I'll switch the camera off. As I mentioned earlier, as soon as I have my cocktail and Matthias will take us through the rest of the session. But thank you very much and welcome everybody. Well, congratulations on your holiday and definitely something worth celebrating. Um, so this webinar is the second of a series of regional outreach webinars which is being organized in the context of the preparation of this report. Um, and by way of background, uh, the Standing Committee on Finance is a constituted body that serves the Convention and the Paris Agreement on Climate Finance Matters. And the SEF received the mandate to prepare this report every four years um, at COP24 in Katowice, so almost two years ago now. The report will inform COP26 and will be made available ahead of COP uh, next year. Now turning to the COP topic, the twin objective for this informal regional webinar is to share perspectives, data and information on regional and country level data availability and gaps, as well as the latest developments in methodological issues from national, regional and global reports. The Standing Committee on Finance also issued a call for evidence, which is available on the UNFCCC website, which is shown on your screen now. And responses received to date are also available on the information repository on the SEF website. So we intend to use the next 90 minutes to first briefly give an overview of the report and the approach taken. And we will invite the technical team to introduce the preliminary technical work undertaken so far. And after the team presentation, we will open the floor for discussions and we will comments and we would really like to encourage your active participation from everyone participating here today. But first, uh, a couple of housekeeping matters, uh, as per usual in these kind of events. Um, should registered participants wish to make an intervention, we would kindly ask you to indicate this, preferably by using the raise hand function or by typing your name into the chat. And the secretariat will help us in keeping the list of speakers. The webinar is also an open uh, and is therefore broadcasted, and the link will be available on, on the UNFCCC website to non-registered participants uh, for view only. Uh, and a kind reminder to participants to use audio only and keep microphones on mute to assist with connectivity for all participants. Request that participants could turn on their videos when presenting information or speaking. Um, I'd also like to mention that this informal regional webinar is being recorded to facilitate the development of the report uh, unless there are any objections for us to do so. So turning to the report overview and approach and the work completed to date, um, the report will map available information and data on the needs of developing country parties from a variety of sources such as national reports including those submitted to the UNFCCC, as well as regional and global reports. In presenting the needs of developing country parties, the report will characterize needs for finance, technology development and transfer and capacity building, thematic area and sectors across 
the various regions, Africa, Asia Pacific, East Europe, Latin America, and the Caribbean. Furthermore, the report would highlight processes and approaches utilized for the determination of needs, underlying assumptions and methodologies, as well as challenges, gaps, and opportunities in needs determination. Building on the initial work undertaken last year, the technical team, under our guidance and with the support of the Secretariat, has done some initial work, starting with information and data gathering and the drafting of individual chapters. Drafting is currently work in progress and further work will be completed, for example, related to terminology, presentation and format. Initial information appears that the technical team will go into in more detail in the coming weeks and months, provide a snapshot of the analysis today and illustrate how data might be presented in the future. We anticipate that the upcoming SCF 22 meeting, which we'll be having next week, um, our colleagues in the SCF will provide more guidance on the further work, including presentation of information in the draft report. The structure and flow of the report will follow the outline which we agreed at our previous meeting of the SCF last year. And so this webinar is very timely as it gives us the opportunity to discuss and provide further guidance to the technical team on the development of the report. Um, if we turn now to the sources of information, I think we can switch slides. There we go. Um, following a mapping of available data and information from the national, regional and global reports, the team has been analysing needs from the bottom-up perspective uh, by country region, thematic areas, sectors, means and implementations, and the timeframes. And by timeframes, we mean short, medium and long-term needs, as you can see on the slide. And for a more top-down perspective, the team is looking also at regional and global reports, such as reports from multilateral development banks, UN agencies, and other institutions. And in addition, all submissions received in response to the call for evidence will be considered. As for the approach, um, given the vast amount of information contained in the official reports to the UNFCCC, and the limited time to consider all available information, it is still premature to findings The technical team will therefore present initial findings and trends and invite your input, particularly related to information that might inform the development of the report sections on data availability in gaps, methodologies and processes, and challenges, gaps, and opportunities. So we're really looking forward to hearing your comments. Uh, in uh, in the on the report after the presentation, which will now follow. Uh, so I'd like to, with this introduction, uh, I'd like to give the floor to Sandra for a, a presentation of the work undertaken so far. Sandra, please. Thank you so much, Matthias and Sahir, for the opportunity to present on behalf of the team. Uh, the preliminary findings that that uh, that we have been analyzing for the elaboration of this report, I would like to start emphasizing uh, one of the points that Matthias commented that the information that I will present today is based on the analysis of official reports that uh, countries have submitted to the UNCCC, uh, such as the national communications, the biannual updated reports, the national adaptation uh, programs, and all these official official reports. In next iterations, we will uh, include other uh, uh, in reports, global and regional reports, but the information that I will present today is mainly based on these official reports submitted to the UNCCC. Uh, the next uh, slide, please. So with this uh, figure, what we would like to emphasize is that uh, we identify that there is a growing number of reports submitted uh, by parties. And within this report, there is a growing a number of, of needs that countries have been uh, identified in the different reports. Uh, not only needs regarding capacity building, but also technology transfer, finance needs, also policy development, institutional arrangements, and all uh, different types of, of needs have been included in these reports. <clears throat> I just want to highlight uh, some of the examples where we have been 
uh, analyzing this information. For instance, the case of the NDCs that most of the countries, most of developing countries have submitted, uh, is where we identified a, a, a number, a big number of activities and, and needs uh, included. For instance, we identified around 3,000 activities that are uh, related to, to these uh, needs analysis uh, for the period of 2020 and 2030. While the information about needs has been increasing, we identified that uh, there is um, uh, information that is still uh, limited. For instance, we identified that uh, like only 23% of the, of the activities are related to financial information. This means that while countries have provided more and more information about the type of needs that they have uh, in relation to climate action, the financial information is still quite limited. Uh, so this means there, there's still um, not enough information about what's the cost uh, of adaptation and mitigation uh, actions all in, in the different reports. Uh, in that sense, what we analyzed was the different um, official reports in the different regions. Next uh, slide, please. And what we identified was also uh, that needs are reporting, uh, sorry, that countries are reporting needs uh, considering different time frames. For instance, uh, countries are providing information about what are the needs that they have in the mid and long term. And this is, uh, for instance, in the case of the NDCs, we are talking about uh, what are the needs that countries have uh, if in the period of five to 10 years or even beyond of, of 10 years. And for instance, most of the, the needs related to this uh, time frame are related to energy and transport sector, and many of them are related to mitigation actions. But when we talk about short term needs, uh, we identified uh, this is from one to five years. Uh, we identified that most of the needs are related to sectors such as water, agriculture and health. And, and many of them are very uh, related to adaptation needs. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to analyze is to what extent these needs are related, for instance, to these um, uh, local level community needs, or to what extent are related to closing the gender gap. And while more countries are reporting information uh, based on uh, vulnerable, vulnerable communities, the information about uh, gender and, and vulnerable communities in the reports is still limited in, 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 in most of the countries. Next slide, please. What I would like to highlight in this slide is just to show you the type of, well, all the reports that we analyzed and all the number of activities that we identified in the revision of all these reports. And what I would like to highlight in this slide is the number of activities that are related to financial information. As you can see, and I, as, I, as, as I was mentioning, in the case of the NDCs, we identified this, uh, more than these 3,000 activities, but only around 800 are uh, including or, or are related to financial information. However, in other reports, for instance, the Green Climate Fund uh, programs, country programs, provide further information about financial um, needs. So the information among the different reports vary uh, a lot. And what we would like to highlight in this point is that uh, where we are finding more financial information, for instance, is in the case of the NDCs and the, and the GCF um, uh, country program uh, reports. Next slide, please. Uh, for the SEF, it was very important to understand not only what are the needs that developing countries have, but also <laughs> what are the type of processes and approaches that the developing countries are following to actually uh, identify or characterize those, those needs. And it is important to say that um, there is uh, the, the, um, the approaches uh, vary uh, very widely among countries, there is not necessarily a one specific uh, pathway that countries follow to characterize or to determine these needs. However, we identified some key steps that some of the countries are following to, to do this characterization. Uh, and one of the, the, the steps are normally is normally related to the actual engagement of high level actors to achieve a badging in the within the, um, for instance, uh, with the high level ministers or even including the, the prime ministers or the presidents of, of countries. So sometimes the engagement is, uh, is, try, is try to be more like a, a very high level uh, process. 
Uh, other countries are also following, for instance, the actual establishment or, of institutional arrangements to characterize and to analyze these needs. For instance, um, many countries have uh, climate change committees within the government and they discuss internally of these committees the actual necessities and then they report these necessities in these official reports that are submitted to the UNFCCC. And another step that sometimes is taken is also related to the actual consultation with the stakeholders. Uh, for instance, this differs. Uh, some uh, I, I will I will mention these. Uh, sometimes the stakeholders are uh, NGOs or private sector or even communities. And this is also a common approach mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. countries follow to 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 achieve um, the um, the goals. Um, if the colleagues that are joining can please. Put your uh, mute, uh, please, to to continue with the with the dialogue. Thank you so much. Um, and well, and finally, after this type of processes, countries finally identify these needs that are most of the time related to the actual sectors, uh, mitigation adaptation sectors, and they they provide this information in in the documents that are submitted uh, to the, to the UNFCCC or other national policies. Next. A slide, please. This map is just a, a way to show you the different approaches that countries follow to determine these needs. For instance, we identified that some countries um, follow rather a top down approach, uh, which means that most of the decisions or the identification of needs are taken by, by governments uh, only. And this is the case of the countries that you can see in, in color blue. In color green, you can see those countries that have actually established certain policies to actually uh, 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 identify and, and conduct different uh, processes to actually identify those needs. In the case of the, of the brown, uh, brownish uh, color uh, countries, it's where we identified that the stakeholders consultation uh, took place in an in a, in a, in a explicit way. And there are also countries that have identified these needs, but are not necessarily explaining what are those processes that they have been um, putting in place. And in this case, those color, the, those countries are in color orange. That means that they uh, are not defined. They, what is the exact uh, same, the exact uh, process that they followed? Next slide, please. So one of the key elements that we wanted to understand was also um, to what extent countries have in, include uh, the gender considerations in the actual analysis and, and identification of their needs. Uh, in this map, what you can see in, in color orange are those countries that have in, uh, are, are not included a gender approach in the actual identification of needs in an explicit way. This means that they probably are doing, uh, are using or are taking a gender approach, but they are not necessarily including these in the reports in an explicit way. While the, the countries that you can see in color, in cream, color cream, are those that are explicitly uh, providing information about the process that they have been taking to determine it with a specific gender approach. Uh, and when we were talking about uh, the stakeholders approach, uh, the uh, stakeholders consultation, we were mentioning that, for instance, um, some countries have followed like uh, more like a governmental uh, leadership uh, only to determine those needs. Uh, and this uh, graph represents how like the amount of countries that follow this um, more like a governmental centric, let's say, approach uh, in the bar blue. In the bar, uh, in the orange one, you can see the, the number of countries that are actually uh, doing consultations with NGOs and private sector. And the, in the gray bar, you will see the number of countries that are also including communities, uh, local communities uh, in the definition or the characterization of those needs. While in the yellow bar, you will see the number of countries that haven't uh, necessarily um, the, let's say establish the, the what's the process that they have been following to identify and to characterize these needs. Uh, next slide, please. So the, the previous part was more about the type of processes that countries are following uh, to actually determine the needs that they have uh, on climate action. And now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the actual methodologies that countries are following 
to identify those things. And what we identified is that while most of the official reports provide guidance uh, to countries uh, for the elaboration of these reports, um, not all of them establish certain methodologies or specific uh, approaches to develop or to, to uh, elaborate these uh, reports. And therefore, it's not always clear uh, what type of needs the countries have to include. Uh, so in that sense, the information uh, that exists in all of these reports vary a lot uh, uh, among countries. Uh, the, the, the size of the reports are very different and therefore the actual identification of needs also vary a lot uh, in these reports. Uh, but one of the elements that we identified is, for instance, in the case of the technology assessment, uh, the technology as assessment provide guidance to the countries, but also provide certain um, uh, specific approaches. For instance, the TNAs tend to follow the multi-criteria analysis, and most of the TNAs follow more or less the same structure that has been helping us to, to, to identify uh, information that is more harmonized, and therefore we it managed to identify more detailed information about the type of technology, the type of capacity building that countries need to apply the, that technology, and the actual cost of those technologies. So the, some, some reports tend to provide further guidance that we assume uh, make easier the, the actual elaboration of these reports and the provision of, of needs uh, for countries. Next slide, please. And in this case, I'm just going to mention a couple of examples uh, about the type of methodologies that countries are using to characterize these needs. For instance, in the case of the mitigation needs, uh, we identified that most of the needs are uh, related to, to the actual um, analysis per sector. Uh, for instance, some countries uh, tend to use the life cycle analysis method to characterize the needs of, of, of specific sectors. Other, other countries um, try to use, for instance, emission trajectories and projection uh, scenarios to determine uh, what are the needs or se or in, sectors, in certain sectors. And also some of the countries use their measuring, reporting and verification systems to identify what are the, the gaps uh, in the specific sectors to therefore determine what are the needs that they have in this sector. So just to give you an example, most of the, of the methodologies that we identified are in sectors such as cross-cutting, energy, inventories or, or transport. Um, is where we can see more uh, methodologies applied to, to identify these needs. As I was saying, the case of the TNAs tend to be um, very explicit in the, in the type of needs that, that countries have, particularly for the case of mitigation. Uh, and regarding the cost of these uh, uh, mitigation needs, we identified that most of the analysis that countries have done related to the cost of these needs are more related to mitigation uh, actions. And this is primarily uh, something that we identified in the case of energy, transport and land use is where um, the countries that provide information about the financial uh, needs uh, for mitigation are related to, to these sectors. Next uh, slide, please. And precisely in the case of adaptation, uh, what we identified, uh, next slide, please. Uh, in the case of adaptation, we also identified that most of the methodologies follow also a sectorial approach. Uh, countries tend to use uh, methodologies, for instance, like multi-criteria analysis, uh, vulnerability scenario or vulnerability assessments to characterize what are the levels of vulnerability in specific sectors. And based on that, they determine what are the needs that they have for those specific sectors. Um, and what, what we observe is that when countries analyze or characterize adaptation needs, they tend to apply uh, more often a bottom-up approach. This is trying to bring the perspective of communities, which is uh, something that appeared more often than uh, mitigation, uh, when, when they characterize mitigation needs, for instance. And we identify that um, methodologies to determine needs in the adaptation uh, side uh, we identify that is mostly apply uh, to define, for instance, cross-cutting needs, agriculture uh, needs, you know, water needs, or also other needs related to ecosystems and biodiversity. Uh, and of course, one of the key elements that is important to, to highlight is that there is more and more information about adaptation. In previous reports, we identified that there are more there was more information about mitigation, 
But nowadays there is more information about adaptation and the elaboration of the national adaptation plans and national adaptation programs have served as a very good practice to provide more and more information about the adaptation needs of the specific countries. Uh, however, we identified there, there is still a gap in terms of the information regarding the cost of the adaptation measures. So uh, the, the actual financial analysis of the adaptation um, measures is still a uh, very limited and actually we identify that there is a, a, a work in progress like countries are asking for more support to conduct analysis to estimate the cost of these adaptation uh, measures next slide please so this is just to give you an idea of the type of analysis that we have been conducting like to understand better what are the needs uh, what are the sources of these needs how the countries have been identifying and characterizing these needs and the next iteration what we would like to do is work a little bit more in the analysis of the case studies uh, the analysis of challenges and gaps that countries have to actually determine these these needs and also about the opportunities and this workshop is precisely to, to give you this general idea and based on this, uh, uh, well, ask for further inputs that uh, countries in Latin America can uh, have to, to increase the, the number of, of for instance, um, information reports that we can include in this, in, this, uh, in this report to make it more robust and to include further case studies. So, this is the, the actual aim of this workshop to receive your impact uh, your input and then continue working together uh, in the elaboration of this report. Thank you so much. And Matthias, I will give you uh, the mic back. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Sandra. Um, and um, before I, I continue, could you just maybe briefly uh, explain the concept of multi criteria analysis with you? Uh, had in the slide on adaptation needs, just very briefly. Of course, uh, multi-criteria analysis refers, uh, it's, it's a method that many countries use to analyze, well, to determine uh, needs and they, when they refer to multi-criteria analysis, they, as, as names refers, they use different criteria to, to analyze one specific measure. For instance, some of the countries include uh, economic analysis, social analysis, environmental analysis, or other specific um, elements to determine uh, what is the behavior of one specific sector, for instance. They use it uh, most of the time for to determine what type of technology for instance, would be suitable for a specific sector. So they use it, for instance, renewable energy. How, what are the considerations in terms of economic or, or social or other considerations to actually determine that that technology is, is uh, suitable for that specific sector or for that specific uh, country? You know, it's a, it's a whole process that countries use to determine when one specific um, yeah, measure, a technology or others may, may be suitable for, for the purposes that they, they are um, yeah, pursuing. All right, thanks very much. Um, Athena, George or Aide, anything to uh, complement from your side? I think no. Uh, then uh, thanks again, Sandra, for a very useful presentation. And let me also take this opportunity to thank the whole team for their uh, very uh, the, you know, the, 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 their efforts in pulling all of this together and the continuous work they're doing uh, to make sure we have a, a robust and useful report to, to present. I um, mean, there's, uh, as you will understand, there's a vast amount of information which the team is going through to and uh, presenting in a, uh, in, a, in a way which will be understandable to us all. To us all. So uh, really a big thanks to the whole team for, for all the incredible work they're doing. Um, I'd now like then to uh, open the floor for uh, comments um, and as you can see we have uh, a couple of questions uh, already for you um, and we have them sort of in three different sets. So I think we'll start with this set of questions on data availability in gaps um, and then we'll move on to uh, methodologies and then finally we'll go into challenges. Uh, but hopefully, sort of uh, by dividing these the, the sets of questions 
uh, in this way, it will help us uh, also in our discussion and and uh, um, sort of facilitate the, the comments uh, from from participants. So if we go back to the, the slide on data availability in gaps, let us start there from these questions that you see on your screens now, hopefully. Um, any comments on or suggestions on other information data sources that could inform the report? Um, how you see national and regional reports or needs evolving, how this could be reflected in the report, uh, and what regional case studies are determining needs that could be reflected further um, in the report. Um, and of course, we could have uh, other comments and, and suggestions as well, but this is sort of more to, to help us guide the, uh, the conversation. So who would want to start? Um, either if you raise your hand uh, or you write in the chat, um, and hopefully the secretary will also be able to see uh, who wants to go first. Or of course, we want to start with more general uh, reflections or comments or questions uh, on the report itself and, and the work undertaken uh, so far. I see a hand from, let's see here. Uh, I see um, that from uh, Maria Antonella, please go ahead. Do you hear me, Matthias? Yes, please go ahead. OK, well, good morning, colleagues, and good afternoon to all colleagues from GULAC, the Secretariat. Uh, my dear friend Sahir, I would like to congratulate him. Uh, to begin with, I would like to clarify that I'm not going to, to turn on my camera because I'm having some kind of connection problems. I'm not as lucky as him. Here in Argentina, we're not having a holiday. But well, uh, of course, uh, congratulate uh, him. And also, uh, very nice seeing you, Matthias. I believe that the last time that we bumped into was at the GCF board meeting. And in Manila, so well, thank you very much for this initiative and thank you very much for the S, uh, SCF uh, um, members to, to be part of, of this call. Um, I would like to make only some general comments. Uh, in our case, uh, Argentina uh, submitted uh, its um, its submission well, to be um, submitted its submission, its submissions on the needs on January, I believe. Um, I Believe, I, I, firstly, I would like to thank the Secretariat for preparing this uh, presentation and to uh, thank, of course, all, all the work that the SCF has already or has been doing during these, these, these months. Um, what I would like, I was expecting, I, to, I have to be honest, I was expecting to see um, a report more focused on the real needs of developing countries. Of course, uh, I think that it's very important to have these methodologies. Uh, they're really very useful for us in order to uh, help us to identify and to continue identifying uh, our needs with uh, in, in our worldwide uh, value in trillions of, of dollars. Um, but I was expecting a more um, approach uh, of our real needs and mainly because if this this report could be very useful as an input for instance for the next uh, Jeff uh, at Jeff H uh, eight uh, replenishment uh, secondly I would like to say that I'm I've been uh, noticing uh, lots of methodologies uh, regarding mitigation but not the same um, quantity and quality of information uh, regarding adaptation, which is very important for, for, for developing countries. That has uh, been raised in many um, financial uh, meetings. I don't know if that is mainly because uh, there have been more methodologies developed in, in mitigation and not in adaptation, but perhaps if the intention is to um, include methodologies, I believe that adaptation should have um, a more um, important focus. Um, well, that's for, for the moment. Sorry, I think that I'm not sure if I if my Wi-Fi it's it's working well, but well. Uh, thank you very much. 
Thanks very much for those comments. Uh, very useful for us to hear. Um, and let's see if we should take a couple of questions uh, to start with, uh, uh, or if we maybe should have reflections from the team right now. If there's anyone else who wants to come in at this stage. Um, Sandra, would you want to um, then to uh, reflect on uh, Maria's comments? Yes, of course. Uh, thank you so much, Maria, for, for your comments. Probably just uh, regarding the actual methodologies um, for adaptation needs. Uh, I think it, it is important to mention that, uh, as you said, it's very important to have both um, uh, the balance among those. But what we identified is that countries uh, are not necessarily including uh, for their information, for instance, about methodologies for the case of adaptation. Uh, there are there there is more information in recent reports about adaptation, but I think the where the methodologies have been more applied in in reports are related to mitigation. But we are trying, uh, as you as you mentioned, to to expand the analysis. And as I was saying, this first iteration has been mainly focused on, on um, the official reports and what we are identifying of these pieces. But we are trying to continue with the analysis to further identify other methodologies related to adaptation to, to complete the analysis. So uh, we hope to keep doing that in the in the next iterations. And, and if you have a specific uh, suggestions in reports or other sources of information where we might find other type of methodologies for adaptation, it would be very, very welcome. Thank you. Thanks uh, very much. And just sort of to uh, to continue along those lines, I mean, um, the report we're doing uh, is not sort of, um, we're, what we're doing is compiling the information we find in reports already out there. Uh, so, I mean, we won't be doing in, in the context of the report any sort of uh, won't be developing methodologies of ourselves or doing any counting ourselves, but rather just sort of compiling what's already out there and putting that in a context which makes it sort of easily accessible or as easily accessible as possible. Um, so if, if, you know, if you're expecting a report to focus more on the real needs, as you say, and, and if by that you mean numbers, um, what you will see is basically what we have. You know, that's uh, the, uh, in as much as we can relay whatever in the, the these national reports or the global and regional reports that will be reflected in in the in the or itself. Um, so it's just sort of a stating of the facts what's already out there. Um, and I mean, and the same goes for the methodologies. I mean, for the met we will try to compile and reflect the methodologies used for doing these reports, which are already out there. Um, and um, if there are no methodologies, if there are sort of fewer methodologies or less developed methodologies for adaptation in the NDR, that is a reflection of the fact that there are, that's the case in the reports which we've been looking into. Um, but, but I mean, as Sandra said, hopefully we will be able to develop both sort of the, the reasoning behind this and uh, and give more flesh to the bones eh, as uh, further iterations of the report are being developed. Uh, and I see a hand from uh, Manuela, please go ahead. Um, thank you very much. I I couldn't I couldn't sign in with with the name of my country because I couldn't I didn't know how really. But my name is Manuela Rios. I'm from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Colombia. Um, and along with uh, Roberto Cespedes from Costa Rica, we lead uh, ILAX finance negotiations. So I just wanted to, to well, first of all, to thank you uh, for the work and the analysis and the report that you just uh, explained. Um, and ILAX and its submission, I, I don't remember exactly the date, but I would say a couple of months ago, and as you can probably see on the needs submission from my like countries is that we have huge challenges uh, in terms of information uh, methodologies. Every country has very different estimations of what their needs are. Uh, and this is basically based because we, we don't quite uh, know for sure how to 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 estimate those costs. Uh, of, of the measures, both for mitigation and adaptation. 
Um, right now, as we are in the process of updating our indices, most most ILAC countries are in this process. Only Chile has already communicated their NDC. We are finding uh, huge challenges uh, for for approaching these costs uh, and knowing exactly what 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 our needs are in terms of finance, of capacity building, of technology transfer. Um, so, so this is a, a very preliminary uh, approach uh, on the cost of ILAC countries, what we send in our submission, but uh, just to, to, to remind that we are, however, still facing these challenges. And we would also like to ask to ask um, you whether you have been consulting or you are planning to do so uh, or having some kind of conversation with uh, regional development banks uh, because we know that some regional development banks have uh, have made studies or analysis of uh, the region's um, needs. Uh, so I think that their inputs could be could be very valuable. We we are thinking especially about the Inter American Development Bank for for the Latin American case. Thank you. Thanks very much, um, uh, Sandra. Any reflections from your side? Thank you so much, Matias. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much, Manuela, for sharing with us uh, the challenges that you have been facing. In fact, is uh, the analysis, the estimation of cost of mitigation and adaptation uh, measures is one of the key elements that we identified as, as one of the biggest challenges that countries are actually um, emphasizing and identifying in their in their national reports, particularly in the case of the NDCs. Uh, they have stated that they are uh, like working on those uh, estimations. As you said, uh, what we saw uh, is that there are different approaches, different methodologies. Uh, most of them lately have been uh, focused on the mitigation side. The analysis of, of mitigation measures like to determine what are the cost of those measures and less regarding adaptation and there are other challenges no regarding the adaptation um, uh, yeah estimation of cost but this is definitely one of the points that uh, indeed we would like to emphasize those challenges so uh, we received your your submission and we are considering all those inputs for the actual elaboration of the reports to highlight precisely those those challenges and just regarding the information of, of regional um, or other entities such as the multilateral development banks yes definitely uh, the next iteration we will include further information be, beyond the official reports in fact in in the african workshop uh, colleagues also share with us that the african development bank is also providing information about the type of needs that we we will definitely consider. So we will do um, we will see uh, if if the Inter American Development Bank has further um, elements for for the for the next iteration. The th thank you so much for for those inputs. Thank you. And it it strikes me that I mean obviously colleagues from from the regional development banks uh, would have been. Um, Welcome to join us also today, but it might be worthwhile uh, to maybe sort of reach out to them separately and to have a, a, a similar webinar with the with colleagues from the various regional development banks just to compare notes with them as well. So that thanks for that uh, for highlighting for that highlighting that opportunity as well. Um, next uh, on uh, my list would be I'm sorry if I'm not getting your name right, but Kishan Singh. Please. Thank you and uh, good day. Good. I think that covers morning, uh, afternoon and evening for everyone. Uh, um, yes, this is Kishan Kumar Singh from Trinidad and Tobago. I just wanted to comment on the last, uh, the third and last bullet on the screen, uh, specifically for country case studies. Maybe it might be useful to share what we are doing. Um, so uh, I think the, the, our NDC did in fact um, I think I mentioned the cost of implementation, which is about uh, two billion US dollars um, uh, till 2030. Uh, we are at the moment um, 
revalidating the assumptions on, on the business as usual baseline and, and trying to uh, reconfirm those numbers. <clears throat> but more than that, um, we are also in the process of uh, of um, of developing or well, we have already developed in the process of fin finalizing a financial investment plan uh, for the uh, implementation of the NDC. Um, and that includes the identification of, of possible funding sources uh, regionally, um, uh, domestically, um, internationally through multilateral, bilateral donors, uh, as well as public private partnerships that can that can be pursued to Im implement um, the NDC. Um, that is, in this, as I said, in the final stages of uh, of um, of uh, tweaking and, and finalization. And um, uh, this is something that we can share if it if it could inform the the report um, in terms of the methodology we used and, and how we arrived at at the at the at the assumptions and the and the conclusions. And if that can help um, uh, inform the report, then we are more than willing to to share our experiences um, accordingly. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Kishan. That means uh, just by by hearing your your intervention, that sounds really useful. So we'd be happy to to look into that uh, as as a case study to be included uh, or or reflected in the report. So thanks very much for volunteering, and uh, I hope the team could be um, either if you can get in touch with the team or the team gets in touch with you to make sure that we we have that uh, information available. That sounds very useful. So thanks so much for for sharing that. Um, I would then have on, let's see, there was another hand coming up. Yes, uh, Paulo from Brazil, please. Hello, good morning, everyone. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. Uh, I think uh, for us as, as a country, we are giving more importance to follow these issues. We know that it's effort for developing countries even to 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 say what they, their needs are so we are trying to 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 raise the concern on these i i support my colleague from argentina i think it's important to not only see numbers but see the real needs of of developing countries and we 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 are facing this year and the next year they are really crucial in, in regarding finance in regarding the needs of developing countries we know that the world is is eager for more ambition and so we are but we have to 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 keep ambition together with finance and to have a holistic approach to climate change so count on us on this exercise of of following the, the needs of developing countries. Thank you. Thanks very much, Paul, for that uh, voice of support and confidence in, in the report. And thanks for, for engaging with us uh, at this webinar today. Um, so would we have more comments? Where, um, as you can see, um, we're going a bit back, a bit back and forth on the on the various questions which we raise on the slides, um, and that's perfectly okay. So I have to take your comments and questions as as they come. Um, but if there is anything else you would like to add on the data availability and gaps, uh, maybe we should then just uh, switch to the second slide uh, on uh, methodologies and processes. Um, to see if there are then other methodologies and processes used at the various levels to determine needs that could be reflected. We heard a couple of examples already. Um, and also if there is further information you would like to share on which methodologies and processes you're using and maybe reflections on the advantages and challenges in using these, uh, we'd be interested to hear that as well. Um, and of course, measures to overcome existing gaps in the availability of information. That's also something which we're hoping to be able to reflect um, in the report. Um, so if, if anyone wants to share some thoughts on that, uh, or maybe further reflections from, from the team, um, happy to hear that as well.
No. Um, I don't see uh, any further requests. Maybe if we just then turn to the uh, final slide. Um, Hello. Yeah, please. Yes, uh, I'm sorry. I, uh, uh, my name is Orlando Garner from Honduras. Um, please, go ahead. Yes, uh, with, with regard to to identifying the needs uh, in Honduras, uh, we are uh, starting in the process of developing um, a, a pipeline uh, uh, aligned with uh, the new NDC. Um, uh, we believe that this is a, a way to assess the financial needs that are required. Uh, as our colleagues of ILAC mentioned, um, when Honduras tried to report what they were their financial needs, uh, we came to uh, to we couldn't provide that information because um, that exercise has not been done yet in Honduras. But we we believe uh, that once we develop our pipeline or our portfolio will be more easily for us to develop our financial strategy. Um, as our colleague from Trinidad and Tobago mentioned, uh, this uh, is very important and also uh, in, in some way will help us to align and coordinate donors and, and to uh, further increase the, the cooperation in, in Honduras. Uh, so, so we believe that the use of this uh, approach of pipelines or portfolios um, could help uh, countries to uh, even to, ma to, to manage even better uh, their uh, climate finance uh, cooperation and also uh, MRB. Thank you. Thanks, Orlando, for, for sharing that uh, country example from Honduras. And uh, again, I think that's also something which we will be have to look into uh, in, the, in, in the report uh, as such. But, Sandra, any reflections from your side on the, on the most recent interventions? Thank you so much, Matias. Well, just, uh, just to probably uh, clarify that regarding the methodologies that we have been identified. There is, you will see a list in the report of the different methodologies that we have identified uh, for a uh, determination of needs in the case of mitigation and adaptation. Uh, the ones that are related to the financial um, estimation, the ones that are related to technology transfer and capacity building. Uh, what we were uh, doing in this presentation is just to highlight some of the common approaches because as I was mentioning, every single country follow uh, very different approaches, very different uh, processes to, to, to get to the, to the final results. Uh, so I think it's going to be very useful to keep um, receiving these inputs as, as the colleague from Trinidad and Tobago was saying regarding the type of methodologies and processes that you are following, uh, which is very, very useful for, for, the, for the case studies analysis. So thank you so much uh, for, for that, for those inputs and thank you too much uh, for the, um, so much sorry to the colleague from Honduras to share with us the, the processes that are conducting. Uh, and I think all of this is going to be very, very useful for the identification of, of the different processes that countries are are following. Thank you. Thank you. And next on my list, I have uh, Aram uh, Rodriguez, please. Hi, good morning, good afternoon. I'm Aram Rodriguez from the National Institute of Ecology and Climate Change from Mexico. And, and thank you for the presentation. I would like to know if if, is there any chance to update the inputs that that we already sent to the uh, to the call of submissions? Because we are advancing in, in some issues related to the uh, methodologies for the an analysis of adaptation uh, measures. At this time, we have some uh, studies related to the uh, estimation of cost of mitigation. Uh, measures of the of the NDC, but we are uh, starting uh, some research related to the identification of suitable 
methodologies for the economic analysis of adaptation actions. So maybe we can provide this uh, early information that we already have that could be useful for, for the for the report. Thank you. Uh, yes, please. I mean, the, the uh, call for submissions is uh, open until the 30th. Um, so uh, we would be happy to receive your updated information. Uh, I mean, according just to follow the procedure on the on the website. So please do. Anyone else um, wanting to come in? Matthias, Athena, can I just add some yeah, of the case studies? Um, good morning, everybody, and, and, and good morning, Matthias. Just to add to what Sandra said, uh, I think on behalf of the technical team, we would really welcome more country experiences uh, and case studies. Uh, as Matthias said, the, the call for evidence is open until the end of October, and we particularly want to hear from, from countries. I, we've heard from Honduras and, and Colombia and the ILAC team, Trinidad and Tobago and Brazil, some of the, the not just the challenges that you are facing in, in determining needs, both in terms of availability of data and methodologies, but also some of the innovation and ways that you are overcoming uh, those barriers. This this last example from, from Mexico on, on this new wave of economic analysis coming from a lot of developing countries of the impact of early adaptation and mitigation actions is, is an example. And I would just encourage all of you who are in the call. I also see some some friends on the call who are providing a lot of technical support and assistance on accessing and deploying climate finance um, in, in different countries to to keep sharing those experiences because we would really welcome more more case studies as we reiterate the next version of the report. So thanks for that. Thanks very much, Athena. Worth uh, reminding uh, ourselves uh, of sort of keep the information coming and keep the dialogue uh, going in order for us to be uh, to have, have uh, access to that kind of information to, to include in the report as well. Um, so thanks for for engaging with us again. Uh, there seems to be someone with their mic on. Um, as you can see also in the chat, um, the details related to the call for evidence can be found on the MSCCC website with the link posted there, so uh, hopefully easily um, accessible for you. Um, I would suggest then, I mean, uh, we still have a bit of time, but if there are no more requests for the floor at this stage, uh, maybe we should be um, slowly wrapping up. Uh, but before we do so, could I maybe invite uh, the team again and, and then Zahir, of course, to uh, make any further comments or reflections on what we've heard so far today? Sarah, do you want to start? Thank you so much, Matthias. Yes, uh, well, first of all, thank you so much to everyone for attending this uh, workshop. Uh, the idea was just to share a little bit of the preliminary findings, uh, and the aim is to continue uh, uh, while well, digging the information. We analyzed close to 2,000 reports, uh, which is a lot of information, but we would like to keep doing, um, like increase the number of, of, of reports from regional or international organizations and, or other national reports that you consider are relevant for, for this analysis. So uh, as Athena was saying, we, we will receive um, uh, this uh, further information until the end of October. So it will be very useful for, for all of us to, to continue with this analysis and particularly in the case studies because uh, we identify very good case studies that will also uh, serve as, as uh, less, uh, will provide lessons to, to other countries. And I think it's going to be very, very useful, the, the exchange of information. So uh, just to say thank you and, and we will be um, through the SEF, well, continue with the update of, of this report. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, and again, thanks to you and the rest of the team for all the hard work and, and taking the report forward. Um, Zahir, anything from you? Uh, just to thank everybody for participating in the uh, 
in the webinar. Uh, I think it was a very useful exercise. Um, I've also heard a lot of the questions that have been raised uh, by Anto and, and Paolo and the others. Uh, we will be also uh, just for colleagues deliberating on the uh, report at the SCF meeting next week. Uh, and uh, Matthias and I will also bring across a lot of the comments that you have made uh, on that. Uh, in uh, uh, And uh, that's about it from me. Just uh, a, a comment to, to my uh, good friend from Argentina. Uh, part of the uh, tradition of Heritage Day in South Africa is something that you in Brazil would probably know as well. Uh, in Argentina, they call it asado. In uh, in uh, Brazil, it's my homemade uh, churrascaria. I guess in Mexico, it will be babacoa. Uh, but that's generally what we're doing on Heritage Day in South Africa. But uh, thank you very much, uh, everybody, for your inputs. Um, over to you, Matthias. Thank you. Um, so just by means of, of uh, wrapping up then, we were happy to have uh, some uh, almost uh, some 70 people, 70 colleagues joining us uh, for for the discussion today. Um, so thanks very much for engaging with us uh, and uh, very helpful to hear your views and thoughts on the report going forward. Uh, so we will take all this into consideration in moving forward with the development of the report. And again, uh, we'd like to continue uh, uh, or again, repeatedly encourage you to continue to remain engaged with us as the report is being finalized in the months ahead. And should you have information or data that might contribute to the analysis being undertaken, please consider submitting your inputs under the official call for evidence before the 30th of October as was stated previously uh, during the conversation, or just sending by information to the Secretariat and the email address you will find on the screen, uh, and hopefully on the screen for uh, during the meeting now today. And then I said, since we are having our uh, SEF meeting next week, Monday through Wednesday, uh, we will be considering the development of the report also at, uh, at the meeting next week. Uh, and we are uh, engaging on the this item in particular at the uh, our discussions on Tuesday next week, so on September 29th. So very much looking forward to that. Um, is there any further guidance from colleagues at the Secretariat at this stage? From the control tower in Bonn. Matthias, nothing to add from the Secretariat at this stage. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much for organizing and putting this together. Um, so I think we will then be, uh, we can wrap up for today. Um, thanks again for your continued support and participation. Uh, stay safe and healthy everyone and looking forward to hopefully meeting you physically in not too far distant future. Take care everyone. Bye bye. Thank you Matthias. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye, Thank everyone. you. Bye.